Well, here we are, ladies. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is episode number 300 oh, wow. of the Middle Ooh. Country. Yeah, yeah, just give me the Middle Country Public Library podcast. Hello and welcome. I'm Sal DiVincenzo here in the studio with my fabulous colleague, Sarah Fade. Hi. And Nicole Rambo. Hello. How's everybody doing? Okay. All right. So uh, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. So this is uh, our first video podcast. Uh, moving forward, we will be doing this on camera. But if you listen on our uh, our usual ways of listening, <laughs> right? So if you listen on our usual ways of uh -huh. listening, so if you listen on um, on Apple, on Google, uh, Spotify, Amazon, we're on iHeartRadio, uh, it'll be the same. You'll you'll right. hear us the same exact way. It, it's it's going to go up the same time every Thursday morning, just as usual. Uh, if you are on YouTube right now, you're actually seeing us, which is, is this pretty. What you were expecting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better. Uh, yeah. Better yeah. Probably expecting. not. No. So, uh, yeah. So uh, we'll, we will be on uh, on YouTube every week, and, and as you can see, uh, we're ready for some visual uh, things. You know, Nicole brought the tarot cards out. I did. Well, now that when I do horoscopes, I feel like I have to make it. Oh, you got to make it a little more. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> um, set, set the scene. We're not gonna. We're not going to. Um, we're not going to let our audio listeners be left out. We will explain what we're doing on the video. But if if you are listening to us and you want to see what we're doing as far as video is concerned, then you should uh, check us out on YouTube. So with that, mm -hmm. we're going to jump right in. Nicole, why don't you go first? Because you seem to be very excited about the stuff that you have to talk about this week. <laughs> well, it's horoscopes. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> um, so it is towards the beginning of the month now. It's not the very beginning, but it's close enough. So uh, we're going to do horoscopes. So it is Scorpio season now. Okay. So happy birthday to all of our Scorpios. Crazy Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah, you, you have feelings about Scorpios. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of Scorpios in my family. Do <laughs> I don't. We have a lot of Leos, I think. Okay. Yeah, anyway. Scorpios. A Grandmother Begins the Story by Michelle Porter is your book recommendation. Where do you fit in, Scorpio? The planets are giving you an expansive view of the big picture this month. Expect some big questions about your priorities and how you approach problems in your life. While this reflection can be uncomfortable for you, it's also crucial for your growth. Taking time now to figure out the intersections of the forces in your life will be massively important in the year ahead. Read A Grandmother Begins a Story by Michelle Porter. Newly single young mother Carter is determined to connect with Matisse, with the Matisse roots she only learned about as a teenager. Carter's mother, Allie, wants to protect her daughter from the cycles of violence and grief she's experienced. Through lyrical spiritual storytelling, we see five generations of women in Carter and Allie's family determined to maintain the thread of their connections to each other and grow their legacy into the future. Hmm. Very good. Yes. All right. Next up, um, we have Taurus. For me. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So Next Door Nemesis by Alexa Martin. You've got a month of extremes ahead, Taurus. Thrilling oh. highs are in store, including big su successes at work. Mm -hmm. okay. Pod right. Podcast, I'm yes. sure. And fun with your favorite hobbies. But they're balanced by some painful lows. Like conflict with family members uh -oh. and potential health trouble. Oh my god! Oh no! It's the oh holidays. My goodness. I know. Maybe it'll just get cold. Overeating. Yeah. That's yeah. What that's all about. You're gonna get an upset tum. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> From the holidays. All right. <laughs> that's, <yeah. laughs> that's Sarah's prediction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Romance is particularly hot and cold. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, A relationship that thrilled you at first could fall spectacularly apart if you're not careful. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> this month, read Next Door Nemesis by Alexa Martin. After a series of embarrassing failures, Collins hits rock bottom and moves in with her recently retired dad in the suburbs. Her sad situation gets even worse when her former best friend, Nathaniel, now her enemy and neighbor, tries to scare her off. Collins refuses to back down and decides to fight back by running against Nathaniel for board president of their local homeowners association. But as the election heats up, so do the sparks between them. Oh, oh so welcome. Oh. 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 All right. You're going to do Aries? I, I see am going to do Aries. All right. <laughs> the Future by Naomi Alderman. Doors are opening for you, Aries. Your efforts to prove yourself and the relationships you've been building this year are finally coming together to present. My relationships with the, with the listeners. 
Well, here we go to present big opportunities. Uh, this is it. It's up to you to know which ones are worth taking the leap. Keeping a cool head under pressure will serve you well. Don't pass up chances to travel this month. You'll be enlightened by your excursions in unexpected ways. Are you traveling? No. All right. Well, don't pass up the chance. Should the chance come up, don't pass it up. You never know. Yeah. I'll be traveling to the grocery store. Oh, never you know. know. You should read The Future by Naomi Alderman. In a dystopian future that might sound concerningly familiar, three tech billionaires control a massive portion of the planet's wealth and business dealings. They've also secretly built swanky bunkers in which they plan to ride out the destruction of the world, which they may or may not be responsible for. When an unexpected group of people teams up to foil the billionaire's plans, it will either be the greatest <laughs> eat the rich moment of all time or a high speed race to global destruction. Oh, all right. Right. Woo-hoo. All right. let's do uh, what's what are what are you, Sarah? A Virgo. Oh, Sarah's a Virgo. That's right. All right. Ready? Critical. Virgo. <laughs> okay. The cactus hunters desire an extinction in the illicit succulent trade. <laughs> Does that sound interesting to you? No. Um, the illicit succulent trade? Does that sound interesting? I didn't realize yeah, right. that well, there the, was a rare I know. succulents. The Silk Road of succulents. <laughs> <laughs> New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Your past only repeats itself if you let it, Virgo. Uh-oh. November offers you a chance for a fresh start. Mm, if right. you've learned from where you've been, it doesn't have to determine where you go next. As much as you love following your own trusty rules and processes, it might be time to update them. November also asks you to reconsider what it is you're looking for in romantic relationships. Check out The Cactus Hunters by Jared D. Margulies. Succulent's steep climb in popularity has fueled a massive illegal plant trade. Such a Virgo book. <laughs> in this book, Margulies, a professor of geology, takes readers on a journey through the wild world of succulents, from their passionate collectors and conservationists to the smuggling rings and poachers who trade, whose trade threatens to send some cacti into extinction. Is succulents a code word for cocaine? No, <laughs> it's the. Rare. You don't want any, you know, extinct cacti. No. Okay. Definitely not. So, that is uh, so you par for course that. for Virgos. Yeah. You should read that, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> action, cactus <laughs> book. Okay. What what do you what do you have on the table here, uh, Nicole? We'll describe crystals. it to our listeners. Some... What kind of crystals? What is this? This looks like coal. No, it's like no. coal. Um, All right, so she's got a black know. rock. It looks like um, this. One, I don't know what it's called. I'll be honest, I forget. But it wards away bad energy. Okay. Mm-hmm. This All is right. quartz. I feel like this nice. is quartz too, right? Yeah, it's quartz too. Yeah. All right. Very good. This one is something about money. <laughs> <laughs> Carry that with me at all times. <laughs> yes. So you're gonna, you're gonna have to watch us on YouTube, folks, if you're listening, so you can see the money rock. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Nicole. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Sarah, mm-hmm. what do you have for us this week? Well, as you know, Halloween has ended. Yes. It has. Yes. Spooky and, season's over. And believe it or not. It's not just Christmas. There is a holiday in between. Is there? Yes. Well, as you know, it's called Thanksgiving. Okay. And I have a list of books that didn't forget about Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, it is from BuzzFeed. I did not curate this on my own. Oh, that's oh, Yeah, I know. I'm goodness. sorry. I know. But they are books that we do have here in the library. But at least it's not Book Riot. It's not Book Riot. Sorry. And um, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'll let it go. <laughs> we have them here physically or through Overdrive or Hoopla. Okay. So the first book is called Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And uh, when you think of Thanksgiving drama, you probably think of that iconic Gossip Girl episode, What You Say. I don't that watch song. it. What You Say. Yes. I said What You Say by Jason Derulo, <laughs> playing as everyone reveals each other's darkest secrets at the dinner table. If you want to read a book with a similar beep that hit the fan level of drama at the Thanksgiving table, Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed is the book for you. And it has a nanny who brings her boyfriend, Kelly, to Thanksgiving dinner at her boss's house, where she learns the hard way that the two used to date in college, and their ending was messy. Nothing like messy endings. Okay. Second book is called Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. Ollie's plans for Thanksgiving go up in flames when a family member's health takes a turn for the worse. But his crush, Will, who is also his former flink, who now pretends nothing happens between them, <laughs> saves the day with an invite to his family's busting, bustling celebration. Okay. All right. Um, 
third book, which I think you read. I have read. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. How does that have Thanksgiving in it? Yeah, that sounds very 4th of July-y. Uh, no, that's like through the season. Oh, okay. how, how romantic are turkeys? Not very. Oh, is that when... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that depends who you ask. If you're asking a reader of the beloved 2019 romance novel Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, they probably tell you turkeys can be very romantic, especially the act of... Pardoning turkeys. Pardoning turkeys and offering to go. stow them in your hotel room. Oh, yeah, yeah. Partially because you find the idea of pardoning turkeys having their own fancy hotel suite a bit ridiculous. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yes, it was very cute. It was a very good book. Okay, so the next one uh, is Big Chicas Don't Cry by Annette Chavez Macias. And uh, this book is about food and family, the two most essential parts of Thanksgiving. So it makes sense that one Thanksgiving helps cousins Gracie and Mary find their way back to each other after growing apart. Oh. Yeah. So that's good. The next is The Perch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole thing. We'll be here. Do you, have cousin, like, do you have cousins? But, like, are you close to your cousins? No. No? No. Are they, like, older and younger? Like, were you, No, like... they're probably exactly the same age as me and my brothers. Really? But you were never really close with them? Well... I'm going to spill the tea here okay. with the uh, family drama. So, uh, but not entirely because it's not just me. But apparently, my mother and her brother has gotten into a little bit of a oh. arg- family argument oh, yeah. sure. that um, lasted decades oh. wow. and resulted in not being close, really. Right, right. So they actually grew up um, two towns over, one town over, actually. From us, and we just never saw them. Really? Oh, yeah, that's... but then they reconciled. I was gonna say, like the book, they come back together. They come back together, but it's for me. I, you know, I, I we're Facebook friends. Okay. That's... Okay. Yeah, and there's no no ill will, or, right? Yeah, no. or anything, but oh, yeah. we, it's just we never grew up together. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I got plenty of cousins. Are you, co- are you close to your cousins? I got cousins everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am close to my cousins. Yeah. 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 No, was, I did like. I'm close to my cousins too, and the holiday was like fun time. Like we yeah, no, yeah. There. Oh no, for for like Christmas, uh, everybody got together on Christmas Day at my uncle's house, mm. on my great uncle's house, and uh, it was the one time we saw every single right. cousin. Right. Yeah. That you know, that was just a great. It's it's a wonderful memory to think about it because yeah. it, it was a nice time to have everybody together. Yeah, yeah. that was nice. Yeah. I don't have those memories, but oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. It's just me alone. <laughs> <laughs> the turkey drumstick. <laughs> Okay, so the, the next book is <laughs> The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Sarah with her drumstick. Yeah, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, written by Sarah Faye, <laughs> by Stephen Trumpsky. This is actually quite popular because it was made into a movie. It's yeah. a YA crossover. So um, it's good for uh, older teens and, mm-hmm. and adults. For 15 year old Charlie, he has some pretty impressive emotional intelligence, which is really showcased in the Thanksgiving scene of this contemporary classic. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, definitely going to want to read that. <laughs> I am excellent at summarizing book reviews. Definitely going to want to read that. Yeah. The next one up. Now, these are all really uplifting books for Thanksgiving. Speak. <laughs> oh, by oh, no. Lori Halls oh, Anderson. Geez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's also... Now, who okay. is this BuzzFeed did this list? BuzzFeed. So we can all thank BuzzFeed for this uplifting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, BuzzFeed. Okay. Holidays aren't exactly Hallmark inspired at Melinda's house. Okay, Sarah's. <laughs> so it's no surprise to her when Thanksgiving goes awry. First, her mom fails to thaw the turkey. Then she escapes to work. Then her dad tries to turn the turkey into a soup and fails, opting to get rid of the evidence of his failed attempt at Thanksgiving dinner by burying the turkey bones. What the? And ordering a pizza. But Melinda digs up the bones and turns into her. Is this speak by? Is this horror? What happens with the bones in the in the in the burying in the? Uh, is that okay. what I mean? Is it page out of order, I mean, perhaps? Might... Are you reading no? a yeah. description of another book? No, Melinda digs up the bones and turns it into her most accomplished art project yet, impressing her art teacher, Mr. Freeman, and her classmate, Ivy. I mean, okay. that might happen in the book, but that's not what the book is about. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that they're picking. Thanksgiving scenes, scenes yeah, of, but, of the books. And, but it, that's not a good it's, representation. It's not a good representation at all. And you're like, oh, she likes art. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, just uh, that, yeah. Okay. It's like there's a section of that book where the turkey crosses the road. Yeah. Put it On page there. 10, chapter 2. It happens to be Thanksgiving. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, goodbye Vitamin by Rachel Kong. Let's see how this is. <laughs> Rachel Kong's Goodbye Vitamin tackles one of the sadder aspects of family gatherings and knowing that this will likely be the last one you get to spend with one of your family members. Aww. Ouch. Ruth knows that her dad, who has Alzheimer's, oh, geez, probably won't be around next Thanksgiving. She writes about this last Thanksgiving, describing it to her father, how he acted, what he said, what they laughed at. It's bittersweet, but in the best way. Okay. Mm, that sounds very sad, though. It's sad. Well, the holidays don't always right. have to yeah. be happy. Yeah, yeah they're not always yeah. red, white, and blue. With That's right. That's turkeys right. bringing together couples. Okay, With exactly. and Without You by Emily Wibberly. Okay, Thanksgiving can actually be a very personal holiday when it falls during an awkward time in your relationship. Like when you're trying to decide if it's gone stale, is over for good, or just needs a spark to bring it back to life. And it's exactly the scenario that Sienna finds herself in when her newly long-distance boyfriend visits for the holiday. Patrick fits in so well with her family, he's like part of the furniture, so how can she be thinking of breaking up with him? Especially when minutes before dinner is served. <laughs> They're engaging in some hot, some of their hottest feeling ever, reminiscent of when they first fell for each other. That's and that's where they cut. Da, da, da. <laughs> what is to happen? <laughs> Sienna and her boyfriend. Okay, give us one more. Okay, lessons in love by Jody Hulford. Lessons in love. All right, here yes. you go. Nicole, this, this is right up your yeah. alley. These are. These are. Oh up. yeah, the next one. A lot of romance because yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holidays can be romantic. Mm-hmm. This romance novel, part of Isn't It It's Sweet collection from Jody Holford, perfectly captures the anxiety and uncertainty around navigating inviting your partner over to the holidays. Is it too much? Too soon? Will it scare them off or send the wrong message? Carter and Hazel teach at the same school where they've been keeping their relationship a secret. It's also hidden from Hazel's daughter. A lot of secrets. Hazel's daughter, Zoe, who's a student at Carter's as well. But secrets complicate things, and every time Carter gets the nerves up to ask Hazel to join him for Thanksgiving, a complication stops him. Hazel's ex, still being in the picture, makes navigating the holidays even harder, but by the end they figure it out with the help of a meddling teenage daughter who finally knows the truth. All right. Yeah. Okay, so we have some books that you can read. <laughs> for Thanksgiving. For yeah. Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and if for you your be rom- star sign. Yeah, rom- you know, romance Thanksgiving or extremely depressing Thanksgiving, yes. whatever you yeah. choose. Those are your two options. Yeah. Whichever one you like. Or a uh, uh, very fast-paced, succulent oh, yeah. cactus book. That's right. The cactus trade. The illegal cactus trade. Yeah. Oh. What would this Silk Road of ca- succulent trading be? I feel like it would still be called Silk Road. I feel like the- Prickly Road. That's right. Like Pickly ca- Road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> sharp, oh. sharp Road. Yes. <laughs> yes. Workshop that. Ouch, that hurts, Rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yes, yes. Let's workshop it. We'll workshop it yeah. for next, the next yeah. episode, yeah. folks. Uh, and speaking of episodes, you know, uh, next week mm. we have uh, This Week in History uh-huh. with oh. uh, Jim Ward. He's going to come down. Okay. You're going what to, week is it? You're going to see him. Well, you're going to see him. What happened during the Civil War? You're going to see him dressed <laughs> as Abraham Lincoln. Oh, boy. So we get actually get good. to see that he does look good. Yeah. He went all in with the with the you know the thing. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna see that, uh-huh. and I do okay. want to mention since that I, that episode's gonna come out after his event on November fifteenth mm. oh, here yeah. at the library mm-hmm. in Center Reach, uh, he'll be doing a reenactment of uh, the Gettysburg Address. Yes. Wow. Yeah. At uh, ten three. When was yeah. his first one? Oh, it was many years ago. He did mm. the first time. He did. He's done it before, so yeah. it's definitely going to be uh, there. And we're going to record that, and we'll put it uh, on our YouTube page. It's the second anniversary of the reenactment of the yes, the twelfth anniversary, anniversary of the first of, the the first. of Jimmy Ward's reenactments. <laughs> So speaking of YouTube, if you are watching us on YouTube, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it but, can only get better. Oh right? yes, no, this is not the actual set. We're still working on it. This is not. Well, the I actual didn't mean furniture. about the set. I meant about the lighting, everything. <laughs> us doing this is all going. No, this to... is it. This is the pinnacle. <laughs> this is as yes, good as this again. is the level. I mean, 300 episodes in, I don't think we're changing. <laughs> soon. Yeah, no. But look, we have. See a... what you get. Look, this happened when we first started this show. When we first started the show, we used just equipment we found, uh, you know, lying around in the library. Mm-hmm. It's very similar. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff we had here, the cameras and whatnot. So as we move forward with the video aspect of we'll the house. We'll get comfier chairs. We'll get comfier chairs. We'll get nicer. Yeah. We do have furniture on order. It's all this, all this is coming. Uh, but we're glad that you're here with us. And uh, we kindly request that you hit the like button uh, and subscribe to our channel because we, we're going to have a lot more coming out besides our show. It's not just us. 
There's other things that are coming. <laughs> okay. There's other things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there are other things that might not be as great as we are, but there's no. I'm just, <laughs> well, I'm just I mean. Uh, so if you want to listen to <laughs> older episodes or read our show notes, you can visit our website, mcplpodcast.com. If you want to email us and tell us how wonderful this was, or maybe you have constructive, constructive criticism, <laughs> oh, yes. uh, it's a podcast at mcplibrary.org. So that does it for this episode. Uh-huh. For Sarah Fade and Cole Rambo, I'm Sal DiVincenzo. We'll see you on the next show.